Hey, everybody, Dave Archer with you again, and uh, we're going to continue our breakdown of some of the players we feel like are going to be impacting the Falcons in the draft. Today, we're going to talk about the cornerback position. Yes, the corners. Now, number four, way too rich to go get a corner. These guys are going to come into play should Atlanta trade back. A lot of conversation about whether Atlanta will stay at the number four spot, take a quarterback, offensive line, or will they move back in the draft? That's where these guys will come into play. So let's take a look at the cornerback class of the 2021 season. Let's start off with Patrick Sertan, the outstanding corner at Alabama, 6'2", 202-pound, junior coming out. This is an outstanding player from a technique standpoint. And why not? His dad was a pretty good player as well. And you're going to find that's a common theme with some of the guys I'm going to mention. He's technically sound as Patrick Sertan. He reads the tells of the receiver. And what that means is some receivers will give away what they're going to do at the line of scrimmage. It might be that they uh, a one foot staggered a certain way or their eyes look a certain place. This is a guy that reads through that extremely well. Patrick Sertan looks for those kind of things. Again, probably something his dad dropped on him. He's really good at the line of scrimmage. He's not hes not overly physical to jam you, but he has great patience. He doesn't take your initial move, so you can't get him beat off the line of scrimmage very often. does a great job of mirroring and running with the wide receiver. Now, this is the probably the most experienced corner that's going to be available in the draft. He ran 4.42 in the 40, has a 39-inch vertical, vertical, so you like all of the athleticism that he brings to the table, but he has 662 snaps of press coverage. He has 1,536 coverage snaps, okay? He's had four interceptions over his career, but he had 24 pass breakups. A lot of experience built in to a three-year package in Patrick Sertan, the corner from Alabama. Now let's take a look at Caleb Farley. This is a kid that's a little bit of an enigma, played high school football in the state of North Carolina and was a prolific quarterback. Had 58 touchdowns, both passing and rushing as a quarterback in high school, did Caleb Farley in North Carolina. Made the shift to corner, he's got great speed. This kid can is a fluid speed athlete. Uh, rumor has it, remember this is a guy that opted out. He's had, some, he had a few injuries uh, that we'll talk about here in a second. But this is a kid that ran 428 in a 40 at six foot two, 207 pounds out of Virginia Tech. He's got outstanding ball skills. He had six interceptions in just two years of play. Uh, he was targeted 45 times, only 12 completions in 2019. He opted out in the 2020 season, but you go back to his tape when he played in 19 as a sophomore, he had 45 targets and only 12 completions. Four were intercepted. Uh, now, he has some inexperience, only 58 snaps of press coverage. Talked about Patrick Tristan and how much experience he has at playing. This kid has less experience, only 24 games his career. He had back surgery on March the 23rd. It was microsurgery. It's been, we've been told by NFL doctors that it was not significant. He has not fallen very much in the draft. He's still probably a top 15, top 16 selection. But again, these are guys we're talking about if the Falcons move back from four, these corners come into play. Now let's take a look at J.C. Horn, another kid whose father played the National Football League. Maybe you remember him, Joe Horn, former Falcon wide receiver, played with the Saints. Uh, you got that experience of having a father that can kind of guide you through what the National Football League means. But when you look at J.C. Horn, 6'1", 205-pound corner out of South Carolina, comes out as a junior, another kid that can run. Ran 4'3", 9 at his pro day. He can really get it aggressive this is one thing that sticks out about jc horn when you watch the tape this is a kid that'll get in your face he likes to smack talk a little bit he's going to get up on your mug he's going to fight you at the line of scrimmage does an outstanding job of that he does a really good job of locating the football once you get down the field does a really good job of winning at the point where the football is excellent 50 50 ball guy if the ball's up for grabs this kid's going to knock it down or steal it now he does have an issue sometimes with tackling because of his aggressiveness, he gets a little reckless. He can get off off balance a little bit and he misses some tackles. And because he's so aggressive at the line of scrimmage, he can get a little bit grabby and, and, and grab on the receivers. Now you would like to be able, you don't wanna to have to teach a guy to be aggressive, okay? This is a guy that's already there. So you can back him off 
of the grabbiness. So J.C. Horn, another corner, could be in play for the Falcons should they fly slide back in the draft. Now, here's a couple of guys that might not be first-rounders, but they're going to be somewhere in the mix later on that you might want to look at. Asante Samuel Jr., another Falcon, another guy that played had a dad play in the National Football League. Do you remember Brent Grimes? Brent Grimes, this guy looks a little bit like Brent Grimes, a little bit bigger from a height standpoint, but his ability to change direction, his balance, unbelievable in his ability to plant and go without any loss of movement from the body. Elite level change of direction for this kid, and he's a ball hawk. He's an outstanding uh, stealing the football, with four interceptions, 20 pass breakups uh, in three years, 31 games. This is a kid that has a real feel for the game, like his father. Remember Asante Samuel Sr., playing off, being able to jump routes, reading route complexes, and leaving the guy he's covering to go steal the football. This kid possesses some of those some of those abilities. So Asante Samuel Jr., a guy to keep an eye on. And a local product. Our next guy is Tyson Campbell. This is a kid at six foot one, 193 pounds, out of Georgia, a junior. He's got excellent change of direction as well. Smooth and athletic, put on the tape. If you want to see Tyson Campbell, the Georgia corner, put on the tape against Kyle Pitts and against Devontae Smith. These are two guys are probably top 10 picks. Look at how he played against them. He ran 4-3-7 at his pro day. He's an outstanding tackler. He's got tremendously long arms to be able to play the ball down the field. He's not an overly physical guy at the line of scrimmage. He doesn't like to jam you too much. Um, and he didn't doesn't have a number of interceptions to his credit. But I love the way he plays the ball in the air with the long arms and the athleticism. There's a look at the corners. We'll look at some more position groups down the road.